made fun of Cheeto's daughter uh, at, at one point as well, uh, calling her a vegetable. And that's the other thing about offense. People get offended when they mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target, and they're not necessarily the same. I'll tell you the joke. You make your own minds up. Right. So. <laughs> and then they jelly eating Cheeto's daughter impression. He'd never eat a vegetable. Thank you for the $5 iron on. <laughs> this guy acting like MMA Joey eats vegetables. Not possible to do the impression. Is it time to cancel the MMA guru? Well, it's the age-old question. Is it art or is it vandalism? The fact is, it's definitely controversial. But intelligence and comedy have many forms. So we're going to have a look at why they want to cancel the goat of MMA YouTube. Chris Matinho impression. Dang! Time is a thing. No, it's not! Control time is not a thing in MMA anymore. I don't care, dude. They're pussies. They just hold people and it's just gay. I like warriors. They aren't warriors. They're just martial artists. They're doing good because they're in I don't know. You're gonna get yourself in trouble? Oh no, are they gonna be angry at me? Before moving forward, there's a few things we need to understand, and that's why the MMA guru is so important to the community. And we have to go and explore the words of nepotism and what nepotism is and why that's important and how that impacts the media and content creators on YouTube and beyond. So what is nepotism? It's usually the act of using your power or influence to gain an unfair advantage or get jobs for your family members. In the broader context, that could be friends, and in the wider context, that could be industry plants. Industry plants within the UFC include people like Nina Drama, Jesse on Fire, Daniel Cormier, Chael Sonnen, Joe Rogan, and Anthony Smith and Michael Bispin. And the reason why I say these people is because in one way or another, they have some kind of allegiance to the UFC. They either get fed information from the UFC directly or they get favoritism from the UFC and favors which is almost like a bribe that keeps them on side because they have access to fighters and privileges that other MMA media members do not get or they are di directly working for the company so they have allegiances what that means is they'll never cross certain lines because you don't bite the hand that feeds now MMA guru serves no one but himself, whether that's for money, clout, his community, or just for the fucking jokes. He serves himself, and that's why the MMA guru is so important to today's MMA media. He'll never be mainstream, he'll never be what the UFC wants, and he will never be under anyone's thumb. He serves himself, and that is important. It is crucial. And there's people like Ben the Bane Davis, who are coming after him, shutting him down, trying to make him seem like he's something that he's not. The reason why I'm bringing him up is because he's been quite vocal on how he feels about MMA YouTube, specifically MMA Guru and Lucas Tracy. Exposés that have no real... <laughs> made fun of Cheeto's daughter uh, at, at one point as well, uh, calling her a vegetable. And that's the other thing about offense. People get offended when they mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target, and they're not necessarily the same. I'll tell you the joke. You make your own minds up. Right. So. <laughs> MMA Joey eating Cheeto's daughter impression. He'd never eat a vegetable. Thank you for the $5 iron on. <laughs> this guy acting like MMA Joey eats vegetables. Not possible to do anything. That's a clever joke, and I'll tell you why. Right? <laughs> it's layered. No. Listen, right? <laughs> The subject of that joke is stereotypes. I'm playing with the notion of stereotypes, right? The more I see of actions and words that he chooses, the less I can really believe that this is all just a character and he's a fine dude. Like, you are, at some point, the words and actions that you commit to. And creating content like this that's just hate-fueled engagement bait, eh, congrats, man. You're going to get a little bit of short-term money. And uh, that's that's about it. I mean, you're not going to really do anything that substantial. It's a word you don't hear very often, isn't it? Spastic. Again, in the 70s, all the rage. <laughs> it's crazy to think that there's a comparison between Ricky Gervais and the MMA guru. But there is. Both have similar senses of humour, come close to the line, and talk about sensitive subjects. And I guarantee that a lot of the people coming after Guru are fans of Ricky Gervais. The only difference is, 
One's in his bedroom and looks like a bum, and one's a world global star. So on that one. This is the thumbnail for Ben the Bane Davis' latest video. It was an MMA quiz that he did. It was pretty crap, and he ended up looking like a casual. Despite the thumbnail, it, Guru was not mentioned in one second of the video. The title reads, who's the biggest loser in UFC? MMA Guru being the correct answer. And we've got a psychopathic picture of Ben the Bane Davis laughing and a picture of Guru looking out of sorts. Creating content like this that's just hate-fueled engagement bait. This guy just said he was against hate-fueled engagement bait despite using the dislike and hatred for MMA Guru to gain himself subscribers, views and friends. It seems to be a trend right now for the self-righteous idiots to go after Guru to try get him cancelled. The problem with Ben the Bane Davis is he's the fierce guy that's selling his soul to the devil if he could be in the UFC's pocket. If he could be the next UFC's Nina drama, he would be. Making nonsensical MMA news and media. Look at that stupid quiz that he put out. Who the fuck is watching that? If you want to do a quiz that's for five-year-olds, then just do it. You don't need to watch some goon do it on the internet. Anyway, that's me. Like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.